God is moving by His Spirit, and it's an exciting time. I believe it's a very exciting time to be alive. Do you believe that? The atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere around Australia is changing. I believe around the world is changing, but we're, this is where we live. Amen? This is the part that we live. So, Father, I'm asking you today, by your Spirit, Lord, that you would just open up the realm of the Spirit to us. Open up the, the kingdom of God. Open up everything that you've made available to us. Father, I pray that things that have clouded our minds and even wrong concepts, wrong teaching, wrong thinking, whatever it might be that's got inside there that stopped you from being able to penetrate deep on the inside would be smashed, broken. And Lord, I pray that your word would be a hammer that would open up that the King of Glory would come in in Jesus' name. Everybody said. The atmosphere is changing. There is a move of the Spirit that's happening all around the world today. I just want to read some scriptures to you this morning as we uh, just see what God's saying. In Revelation 3.20, we know this so well. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens a door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Very, very interesting scripture. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. I believe that God is opening up the doors and people are allowing the King of Glory to come in. They're allowing God to, to come in His own special way. It says, lift up those hands that hang down. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors. And the King of Glory will come in. You see, we've got a part to play. God's already pay, played His part. He's already paid the price. He's already poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. He's made us precious promises. But sometimes we just get so fogged up. But I believe today that if we can, on the inside of us, somewhere or other, start to declare, change is coming. Amen? How many people want change over your own life? Change over circumstances, situations, things that are going on. You see, prophets uh, all across the globe are proclaiming an out pouring of God's Spirit in ginormous proportions. They're not just saying it's going to be a trickle. They're saying it's going to be a deluge. It's an outpouring. It's going to just bring with it signs and wonders and miracles. There'll be multitudes calling on the name of the Lord for salvation. People will be crying out to God. God promised in Acts 2.17 said, in the, and it shall come to pass. Everybody say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. If we believe that we are living in the last days or in this time, there's going to, be, there's going to come a great outpouring of God's Spirit. But friend, it's not a time to, to sit back. It's a time to reach out. It's a time to open up your heart. It's a time to really let the King of glory come in. It's time to open the door so He can come in and dine with us, so He can reveal His truth, so He can reveal Himself to us. God, I believe, wants to reveal Himself to the church. Multitudes and multitudes calling on the name of the Lord. It will come to pass that God is going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Talks about our sons and our daughters prophesying. Talks about old men dreaming dreams. Talks about on our men servant and on our maid servants. God is going to pour out His Spirit. It's going to be a great outpouring. There's going to be a great change. But you see, there's things inside us that, that we've got to break loose. We've got to release because there's giftings inside us. There's giftings. And, and Paul said, he said, you know, stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Stir it up. Not a time to sit back. The church must get herself ready. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready like you got yourself ready to come to church this morning. Not enough just to get yourself ready to come. Get yourself ready to receive what God's doing. Passively sitting back waiting for God to do something. 
That won't work. Watch and pray. Get excited. Stir up that gift inside you. It may be laying dormant, but lift up those hands that hang down. I already quoted the Psalm 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O your gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Last week I shared what I believe had already begun. I was sharing things that I believe was already happening in the realm of the Spirit. Number one, people across the world are beginning, beginning to cry out for change. Like never before, I believe that there is a cry going out from God's people, a cry for change. God is pouring out of His Spirit with signs and wonders. People are crying out for the reality of a living God. We want to serve a real God, a living God, a God who's alive, a God who's well. Do you believe that today? Just going to church won't cut it. What we need is an encounter with a God who is real. We need an encounter. I thank God for the encounters. I thank God for the times when you may be going through a difficult situation. You may be going through a time and, 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 and all of a sudden, it's like the presence of God comes on you. You have an encounter with God. This morning in the prayer meeting, we'd only been there for a minute. We started to just lift up our hearts. We just started to pray. And I, I, could, I literally felt the presence of God just come into that small group of people there. The presence of God is so real. People need the Lord. They don't need a church. We are the church. <laughs> We've got things messed up a little bit. People need God. People need the, God, the, the Lord. We opened up Pandora's box, speaking about some of the strange manifestations. Visitations of angels. Gold dust, precious stones. But old Roberts, one of uh, the great healing evangelists, his hand used to get hot. When his hand was hot, he would run along the, run along the healing line as fast as he could, and touch as many people with that hot hand as he could, and as he touched people, they were dramatically healed. Signs and wonders. <laughs> Amazing things. Amazing miracles happen. Amazing uh, salvations. Multitudes, multitudes. I don't know who this lady was, but there was a famous lady preacher. And while she was preaching, the power of God hit her. She was preaching away there, and the anointing came on. How many people want the anointing to come on this preacher? <laughs> how, many, how many people want the anointing to come on you? Amen. How many people want the anointing? Amen. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm believing, I am believing that we're going to see things that are going to blow our natural mind. And as the power of God hit this woman, it says there that she jumped up on the communion rail. I don't know if you've been in those, those communion rails only about uh, that wide. <laughs> but this lady jumped up on this communion rail and started walking along the communion rail, not having a clue where she is, where she was. It says that she got to the end of the communion rail and she just kept walking. We'd look at that and we'd say, what's going on, crikey, that doesn't seem right. But I want to tell you, friends, signs and wonders and miracles when God moves, Amen. You believe that that could happen today? I don't understand it. I don't have to understand it. I just know that many, many, many people were touched. You see, we need to get uh, last week's tape perhaps to understand some of the things that I was saying because I'm not going to go fully into it. But I believe that God is doing amazing things and Satan, the counterfeiter, is trying to confuse people by counterfeiting some of the signs. You remember Moses when he came up to the Pharaoh? He had a staff in his hand. And God said, throw the staff on the ground. And as he threw it on the ground, it became a serpent. Friend, this is Bible. Okay, this is Bible. It's not hocus pocus. You believe this? You're looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate. Just nod every now and then so I know that you're there with me. Amen. 
It'll be okay. So Moses throws down his stick and it becomes a snake and the people jump back. But then Pharaoh called his people over and they started to throw down their sticks and they became snakes as well. See, the devil is a counterfeiter. But remember this, Moses' snake ate all the other snakes. Oh, thank you. The greater will always overcome the weaker. You believe that today? We need, we need to understand God. We need to understand what God is doing. I believe it, we're in a time that many will uh, try to draw attention to themselves by faking it. There was times there in, in, in church history when the, the healing evangelists would come to town, grab big crowds, but you see they had little bugs in their ears. And there were people working the crowds, finding out people's names and things like that. Friend, there are fakes, amen, but there's reality. There's reality. And what we've got to be careful of is that we keep our hearts open to God, that we let God be God. We've got to, I believe that God's going to watch over this last move of His Spirit. I believe that. God will not tolerate the flesh. In Luke 24, 30, 45, it says, And he opened their understanding that they may comprehend or understand the Scriptures. God wants to open our understanding. Paul's prayer for us that, that God would, would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would understand God, we'd, we would be able to comprehend who this God is. And one of the things in the, in the letter, letter, letter I'm, I'm not going to get that one right, is that they were lukewarm. And if that is the end time church that we're in today, there's a lukewarmness that's in the church. And there's got to come a fire again that's going to burn. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know, that you might know God. The good news is this, is that you don't have to be Super spiritual. We've got the super spiros. That, you know, hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God, yes, brother. And all these sort of things, but they're super spiritual. God speaks to them all the time. I believe God speaks all the time. I believe that. But there are a group of people there that try to put themselves above and I know as a young Christian, when I came on the scene, I used to look at these people. Oh my God, I thought, how oh, I'll never, ever reach the pinnacle. <laughs> I'll never attain. I'll, I'll never get there. I'll never make it. How could I? I could never be that spiritual. <laughs> I could never be that holy. I could never be that person. I think God was saying, praise the Lord. <laughs> you see, what God's looking for is real people, people who are real. He, want, we, he wants us to serve a God that's real, the God that can answer. And, and you know, it, I, I believe that this is where we're living in. The good news is you don't have to be a super spiritual person. You just have to be hungry. Everybody say hungry. You have to be hungry and real. And of course, you've got to be born again. John 3, 3 said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I believe the keys to enter in is Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I believe that there's, a, there's been, if I can put it like this, in church, there's been an e emphasis on growth and different things, cultures. There's been, and it's sort of, how do I put it? It's not been real. It's sort of a, a false thing. But you see, I, I believe that 
there's a thing coming now where men's hearts are start, and women's hearts are beginning to open. Can you catch my drift here? It's not that you just want this or you want that or it's, it's not give me this God. It's coming to God with a totally different attitude. God, I believe, is raising up a people that just come and say, God, we just want your presence. We, we just want you. We want, we want to hear your voice, Lord. We, we want to know what, what, what do you want me to do? What, what can I... I want to draw close to you. If you seek me, you will find me. You will find him. If you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And one of the great keys, one of the great keys to what God is about to do is passion. Everybody say passion. It's passion. Passion. You see, the proof of passion, you, you, you can't come to me and say, oh, I'm passionate for God. But I'll see it because the proof of passion is pursuit. You'll go after God. You'll be there. You'll be hanging around. You'll be there wanting His presence. It won't matter whether oh, Neil's gone five minutes over today. You'll be there. Because when the Spirit of God's there, that's where you want to be. The proof of passion is pursuit. Go after God. Don't go after a church. Don't go after this preacher or that preacher. Go after God. Don't go after this prophet or that prophet. I recommend this man that's going to come and preach. He's, a, he's got a healing gift. But he'll be here today and gone tomorrow. But many people, well, if you go there with an attitude, you'll get healed. And I praise God for the gifting that's on his life. You see, passion, passion will open the door. Passion opens the door for the King of glory to come in. God is no fool. God is not a fool. Let me say that again. God is not a fool. He sees passion. I want to read a story to you here that might explain it a little bit. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 19. Very, everybody knows this story. But I pray today that I can bring some things out that might help us, help us find this Christ who we're looking for. Find this dynamic of God that we need. Amen? Hello? Does anybody know? I better put my glasses on. Verse 19, verse 1, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. I want you to just see some things here. Here's Jesus going through. People are talking about Jesus, saying what great things Jesus has done. But for Zacchaeus, that wasn't enough. He just didn't want to hear what was going on. He just didn't want to be a hearer, hearer but he wanted to find out who this Jesus really is. Can I say this? This is the one, one of the great mysteries of the church that the church is going to find out who Jesus really is. Amen? He is not just your headache healer. He is not your servant or slave. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the 
the champion of champions. Amen. And so here we find this man. He was a chief tax collector. He was rich. He had a passion for wealth. There's something inbuilt in him. This man had a passion and a burning desire to see Jesus for himself. Can I, I say this? When people turn their hearts towards God and in the worship, in the praise, in whatever we're doing, if you're at home reading your Bible, if you're at home in your quiet time or whatever it is you're doing, if your motivation and your, and your desire is to see Jesus for yourself, I want to tell you, you will find him. I believe the church is in for one of the greatest shocks it's ever, ever had. When God begins to re reveal himself through his son in such an amazing way, people, I've often said this, if the world out there could really see Jesus, there would not be one of them that would not gladly give their life to him. But unfortunately, they see Jesus through the eyes of the church. And the media and everything like that messes everything up. But friend, I want to tell you, when you can find Jesus face to face, and then we can go out and portray this Christ. You obviously heard others talking about Jesus. That wasn't good enough for him. I guess what I'm saying this morning is there's something stirring in me that's saying it's not good enough what I'm experiencing right now. I want more. I want more. I want to see the worship team up there worshiping God and it wouldn't oh, worry me one little bit if they all got slain in the Spirit. <laughs> as the presence of God, as they worship, as they, as they play their instruments. I spoke to them this morning. And I've spoken to them many times. They say, I don't want you to play your instruments. I want you to worship on your instruments. You're not up there playing your instruments. You're worshiping on your instruments. And the presence of God could come down. People will be healed. We had somebody healed last Sunday while the worship was going on. You've got to find Jesus for yourself. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But he had a problem. He said he was short of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. This man was, was one of the boss. He was a boss. He is a might have been short, but he was of high stature in the community. He had a gift on his life. He was passionate. He wanted to see Jesus for himself. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But he, but who, sorry, but who, and let me swallow on my spit and get back to myself. <laughs> He wanted to see who Jesus not was, not just hear and say. But who is he? Who is he? Many Christians only hear about Jesus and never really have an encounter with God. Many Christians only hear about God. Can you imagine if the presence of God came down and everybody had an encounter with God. How that would change the atmosphere. How that would turn the tide. How people wouldn't just be talking about doctrine and philosophy. They'd be talking about reality. He touched me. He touched me. He touched me. And now I know. He touched me. He touched me. Amen. Don't have to get so excited. He had heard about what others were saying, but he needed to find out for himself. He was, he was short. You know what? 
A lot of us today, when we come up against something, and there wouldn't be one person here that hasn't, and there wouldn't be one person here that, that wouldn't have said, I can't get through. I can't do it. It's impossible. I want to see it. I want to do it, but I can't. I'm short. He could have just said, he could have done what a lot of us throw his hands in the air, but no, he decided he was going to find a way. Friend, if you look for a way, you will find the way. If you look for a way, you will find a way. And you know what? Most probably when this guy started trotting down the road, can you imagine him? Heading down the road, getting ahead of Jesus, climbing up a tree. How stupid would that have looked? How ridiculous would that have looked? Especially if somebody would have said to him, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, I'm climbing up a tree because I want to see Jesus. <laughs> they would have laughed at him. I was thinking of Sarah and Jason. <laughs> How stupid can you be and still breathe? Hey? <laughs> Have you ever said that to yourself in the last 12 months? Come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. Hey? Yeah, I'm getting a nod. Jason's a bank manager. Got a lovely home not far from the ocean. Could hear the ocean breeze, ocean roaring down. Well, what do they do? They buy some broken down, <laughs> whatever it might have been, place. You see, passion opens the door. Passion takes you into something. Passion goes beyond natural thinking. Passion goes beyond all that. He heard what others were saying, but he had to find it for himself, but he had a problem. He had to come up with a strategy, stupid. He was the boss, he was rich, but he's going ahead to climb a tree. Passion caused him to think outside the box. We need to go after our purpose, our goal, our zeal to reach our heart's desires. We're looking at things right now that look impossible in the natural, but I want to tell you, passion for the vision and the dream and the person, a purpose that God has put in us will push this thing to the limit. We'll try every way possible. I'll climb a sycamore tree if I have to. I'll do whatever I can to break through because passion will open the door. Passion caused him to think out of the box. Out of the box. Passion uh, and zeal uh, to reach our heart's desires. There was a woman in the Bible who once said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She had a purpose. She, she had something inside her. I can imagine this woman, uh, she, she had a zeal. She, she said, I just got to touch him. Friend, I want to tell you, I'm looking for the church when we come into worship and we lift up our hands and that thing inside us is saying, I just got to touch you this morning, Jesus. I just got to touch you this morning, Jesus. I'm going to sing with all my heart. I'm going to sing a little louder. I'm going to shout a little louder. I'm going to dance a little more. I'm going to do this. I'm going to reach you. I'm coming into the presence of God. I've got to touch the hem of your garment this morning. I've got to touch you this morning, Jesus. I want an encounter with you. I just don't want to come to church. I want to touch you this morning. I want to know you. I want to know the power of your resurrection. I want to know who you are. I want to know you, God. I just don't want to hear all the stories about you. I want to know you. If I can touch the hem of his garment, she would have had to push through. She would have been knocked over. She would have been told that she was an unclean woman and she had no rights to be there. Friend, I want to tell you there's not one of us here 
If we honestly look at ourselves, say, I've got no rights to be here, but my God, because of your blood, because of what you did at Calvary, you made a way for me, and I now can come boldly before the throne of grace, hallelujah, and I can lift up my hands, and I can worship you, knowing that I've been washed in the blood, that I'm a new creation, that I'm a brand new man. Devil, you can put any slur you like at me. But I want to tell you, it's going to have to pass through the blood of Jesus. I am washed. I am washed. If I can but touch the hem of his garment. And I want to tell you, friends, you see what happens when you push through. When you push through. When you push through. God, when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stood still. Virtue flowed out of him. I want to tell you, when you touch God, you, it's not just a matter of a little touchy, touchy, touchy. When you touch God, I want to tell you, are you <laughs> did that explain what, I'm <laughs> what I was going to say? <laughs> oh, glory to God! To get a touch from the Lord is so real. You see, this guy, he went up to that sycamore tree. And he was up there. Passion drove him up there. And Jesus walks by. Jesus. He's walking by here tonight, right now. Zacchaeus, an unknown person, as far as he knows, to Jesus. Jesus, Zacchaeus. Neil, Keith, whoever you are, come on down. <laughs> Passion got God's attention, got Jesus' attention. Passion that was in this man wanting to see Jesus. It's not, here I am, pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> not stand up the front oh, trying to be seen it's you wanting God he sees very quiet it's you wanting God you wanting to meet with him you wanting to see him that's what gets his attention. Not all this other rubbish. You wanting to see him. And you can be quietly standing, sitting in your chair, standing there, should your heart open, or get God's attention. Sure. Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to stay at your house. I'm going to eat with you. It says that every time Jesus went through, He stayed at Zacchaeus' house. Every time he went through Jericho. There's another story. I'm just going to open it up because I'm going to preach on this next week. It's found in Mark 10.46. Did you say in your communion message the other day about putting a demand on Jesus? Did somebody say that, putting a demand? It's an Old Testament scripture. I couldn't find anything because you might have, it might have been a different version. This is a story about a man that was by the side of the road begging. And he cried out. There was a passion in him. This man also had heard a lot of things. There was a passion inside him. It was building, I would imagine, as he heard about the healings and everything that that, that Jesus was doing to other people. And he was sitting there begging by the roadside. He'd been there most probably for years. A nobody. Begging. Begging. But you see, 
inside of him. And this is what I'm talking about. Inside of him, while he was sitting there begging, while he was sitting there, whatever it was doing, people and throwing junk at him. And goodness knows what else. There would have been something stirring on the inside of him. If I can just see that man. If I can just get to that man. If I can somehow or other get to that man. I want to know this man. I want to, I want to know him. I want, and passion was building in his life. Passion was building inside of him. And I would think day and night he would be thinking of this. And I want to tell you, friends, I would guarantee you that there are many of you in this meeting place that as you put your head on the pillar, wherever you, when you start reading your word, there begins a stirring on the inside of you for more. There, there comes a stirring that you want to experience something. You want, you want something more in the kingdom of God to start happening in your life. And that's what I believe was happening to him. And all of a sudden, somebody says, he hears, here's the crowd, and he might have said to somebody, what's going on? What's happening around here? What's going on? And they said, it's Jesus. He's walking by. And this man who was blind began to shout out these words, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want to ask you this question. Where did he ever hear that Jesus was the son of David? Passion will open up revelation to you. Passion will open up revelation to you. I'm going to close that message right now. I'm going to finish it next week. Don't miss it. I can hardly wait. That's why I started a little bit. <laughs> Passion will open up revelation. Passion will open up doors. Passion will cause you to pursue something. Passion will, will take you places that you never thought you would go. Passion will cause you to do things that you never ever thought possible. Passion will cause you to come face to face with Jesus. When Jesus heard those words, I believe that there would have been multitudes and multitudes that were following Jesus, were all shouting out the name Jesus. But he heard Jesus, son of David. That got his attention. And he stopped. The woman with the issue of blood, when he touched the hem of his garment, when she touched the hem of his garment, virtue flowed. Jesus stopped and said, who's touching? A lot of people in church that are thus there for the ride. But I want to tell you there's another ride. We sang about it today. Will you ride with me? Will you ride with Jesus? Will you ride? Will you ride? Folks, this morning, I pray. I, I just... I... I shepherd <laughs> I want to I want to pray for people this morning that really want to be loosed that want to break free that you've sensed this surge on the inside of you you sent and and it's, it's, it's like a it's like a itch you can't scratch but you want to be loosed and released I'll, I'll just stand to your feet right now If you're here this morning like that, if you're if you're here this morning and and you don't have that real encounter with God, you really you, you know Him but you don't know Him. Like the Richard at the back there. I know Richard, but I don't really know you, Richard. You know what I mean? You catch my drift? I know you, but I don't really know you. <laughs> and we can have that sort of relationship with Jesus. I know him, but I don't really know him. You've got to get to know Jesus. 
If, you've, that's, if you don't have a meaningful relationship with Jesus, you need to let the King of Glory come in. You need to let him come in. And I'm just going to open this altar this morning because I, I really feel the presence of God in this place. I feel the anointing. Just come. Come this morning. Let the presence of God touch you.